So, I'm Jukita Priyanka Thakur, teaching you life sciences and welcome you all on our YouTube channel, Guru Mantra Shikshaka Granth. So, today I'm going to teach you about bacterial growth and how to control bacterial growth, okay? So, we are covering microbiology portion for gate life sciences and in this section I'm telling you about bacterial growth and its control. Now, let's start it. So, what exactly is bacterial growth? What do you understand by bacterial growth? Increase in cell number or mass okay increase in cell number or mass is called bacterial growth or any growth okay so uh, it depends upon the ability of the cell uh, to form new protoplasm from the nutrient available in the environment so mostly bacteria divide by binary fission so you can see the diagram and you can see binary fission in the diagram as well okay so bacteria divide by binary fission binary fission it becomes it becomes when a dna replication takes place each circular strand of dna will attach to plasma membrane membrane will invaginate and cell will be divided into two parts uh, uh, cytokinesis will take place and two daughter cells will be formed these two are two daughter cells okay uh, I'm sorry, okay, two daughter cells will be formed. So, these are two daughter cells, fine, which are having equal number of chromosomes. No mitosis or meiosis takes place. You know that no mitosis or meiosis uh, takes place uh, in binary fission, okay. So, we know it, fine. The principle that underlie chromosomes uh, segregation in bacteria and uh, uh, UK roots share similarity. Although bacteria segregate DNA as it replicate and lack a eukaryotic like mitotic apparatus for segregating chromosome. A few bacterial species reproduce by budding. They can form a small bud that enlarges until the size approaches that of the parent cell and then it will separate. So bacteria can divide by binary fusion or by budding. In budding, a small bud will be produced. That will, uh, this is a bacteria and this is the small bud produced from bacteria. When this bud will attain the size of the parent, it will detach from the parent body and get divided into two. So FTSZ, remember this protein, FTSZ. Do not forget it, FTSZ is an important protein for cell division in uh, your prokaryotes and it is homologous to tubulin. Also remember this thing, this protein is homologous to tubulin and what is tubulin? Tubulin is the building block of microtubulin eukaryotes. The cellular concentration of FTZ uh, will regulate the frequency of division. Uh, as the septal invagination takes place, okay, uh, beginning, at the beginning of septal invagination, FTSZ, FTSZ is recruited there uh, at the division site where it will assemble into a ring and remain associated with leading edge of invaginating septum until the separation is completed. Bacterial cell, when it is incubated into a flask containing fresh culture medium, uh, and uh, it, uh, then it enters bacterial cell. Okay, this is the bacterial cell. Okay, it enters a fresh culture medium. It will continuously like divide, divide, divide and divide. Fine, it will continuously divide. Okay, it enters into a rapid growth phase during which the bacterial cell will divide and increase its population in the flask medium. Since bacteria are not transferred, as you can see, no bacteria are transferred. Fine, no bacteria are transferred to the new cell. Yes, we know that no bacteria is transferred to the new cells and no new nutrients are added. No nutrients, new nutrient media is added. Then what will happen? No nutrient, new, new nutrient media is added. Then what will happen? Tell you. Then the increasing population of bacteria is, then there will be increase in the population uh, size. After some time, it will enters into a stationary phase with the exhaustion of the required nutrients and accumulation of inhibitory end products in the medium. Eventually, your stationary phase uh, of bacterial po population will culminate into death phase when the viable bacterial cell begin to die. So a batch culture, you can consider a batch culture closed system 
growth in batch culture is usually divided into four phases you can see the lag phase exponential phase stationary phase and death phase okay what happens during lag phase there is no increase in the cell number only uh, no increase in, no cell number increases okay no cell number increase yeah, this is number okay though no cell number increase but mass of the cell increases okay mass of the cell increases so this phase uh, is not a dormant phase the, the its phase and the length of this phase is determined by the characteristic of bacterial species and in parts by condition in the medium then comes your exponential phase exponential phase uh, now you will see a black balanced growth balanced pattern of growth in the exponential phase okay in this phase all the cells are dividing regularly by binary fusion and they will uh, they will show geogrammatic progression cell in this phase will show geogrammatic progression now what is this geogrammatic progression uh, in geogrammatic progression you see one cell divides to form two cells and two cells further divide to form four cells and these four cells will further divide to form eight cells so this is what we call exponential growth so exponential growth is not the whole it does not show the overall growth uh, or grow it does not show the growth curve of bacteria it is just a part of it right and uh, the rate of exponential growth of a bacterial culture it is generally represented by generation time and what exactly is uh, your generation time so generation time is actually the doubling time of bacterial population okay generation time you can say is the doubling time and what is the doubling time what is the generation uh, time time interval required for the cell to divide you can write time interval required for the cell to divide required for the cell to divide okay for required for the cell to divide right you understand it fine okay and uh, then comes your third phase stationary phase uh, in this phase uh, there uh, is like a entry of new cells as well as death of other cells fine like exponential growth cannot be continued forever in a batch culture batch culture is a closed system in which no new cells no new nutrient media are added and no bacteria are transferred from, from that in this phase cell uh, growth rate uh, Uh, will be leveled off and it will become constant the number of cell multiplying equals the number of cells dying so exhaustion of available nutrients uh, accumulation of inhibitory metabolites and exhaustion of the space will be responsible for the stationary phase then there will be uh, death phase uh, in this phase if our uh, incubation continues after the population is reaches reaching a stationary phase there will be a death phase now in death phase viable cell population will decline and during death phase the number of viable cell decreases geogrammatically it means exponentially i hope you understand about all these things let me tell you about the calculation of generation time so uh, as you know when uh, growth is occurring exponentially there is increase in bacterial population by geogrammatic progression and if we start with one cell that it will be divided into 2 and 2 into 4 and 4 into 8 and so on so interval for the formation of two cells is called as generation time i already told you so generation time how can you calculate it it is like 2 uh, uh, t upon your uh, n and what is t t is your uh, time uh, it can be in minutes or in hours minutes or hours right okay ma'am right and uh, then comes your n n is the number of generations n is the number of generation and how can we calculate the number of generations if you want to calculate the number of gen generations see calculation of number of generations okay calculation of number of generations right okay so see uh, if you are talking about n not and not will be the number of bacteria at the beginning of time interval okay at the beginning of time interval fine ma'am beginning of at the beginning of time interval right 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 okay then uh, and not uh, and, and what is n number of i would say number of bacteria at or you can write t at 
time t or at the ending of time interval and n is what number of generations fine uh, now how can you call calculate it apply logarithm to this term it, uh, it becomes like n equals n naught uh, into 2 raised to power n by 2 raised to power n i have told you already fine now i apply log to this it becomes logarithm of n equals log n naught into 2 log n log 2 not 2 log n it's n log 2 fine and the number of generations you have to call calculate the number of generations okay then this n will be here now n equals log n minus log n naught upon log 2 and how much is log 2 log n minus log n naught upon 0 0.301 0 0.301 and this thing become equals to 3.3 .3 log n by n naught they remember this thing 3.3 .3 log n by n naught okay now let's come calculation okay i didn't show you the graph uh, let me show you the graph here here you can see uh, log 10 cell numbers okay exponential growth nt uh, you are here nt or n i would say this is nt the number of uh, so, uh, like population at the end of interval or uh, n naught to this is n naught uh, to n okay this is arithmetic plot and this is semi logarithmic plot cell number is increasing right okay how uh, to calculate the bacterial cell density now what is the cell density exactly let me first tell you about cell density number of cell per unit volume number of cells per unit volume number of cells per unit volume is known as cell density like how many number of cells is present in one millimeter cube one centimeter cube etc okay it can be uh, like it can be can be calculated directly or indirectly can be calculated directly or indirectly and how to calculate it directly and indirectly this become a question to question to you now so how to calculate directly by counting the colony okay just count down the colony okay uh, and uh, how to uh, calculate it indirectly by the measurement of optical absorbance through spectrophotometer optical absorbance through spectrophotometer right right now spectrophotometer fine okay now measurement of colony how to measure the colony okay how to measure the colony see bacterial cells will form uh, will form they will form an agar medium and uh, bacteria will divide as the bacteria will divide and it its progeny will write this is see this is a plate and uh, there will be like a agar medium agar medium and uh, there are some bacteria you are providing the medium this bacteria will divide and uh, when their size it will increase to 10 raised to power 6 cells they will become visible okay these bacteria these are the bacteria and you can see the colonies on the plate now or on the factory on whatever okay so you now you can calculate the bacterial colony because each viable cell can form a single colony and by counting the number of colonies formed when a known volume of diluted culture is created one can determine the number of bacteria in an undiluted culture as well so bacteria culture will contain very high number of cells and uh, that's why it must be diluted before plating and the dilution factor must be taken into account when you are calculating the uh, cell density in undiluted culture. If you are calculating the cell density in the undiluted culture, you must take in account the dilution factor. Okay, how can you calculate it? See, number of colonies formed, how many number of colonies are formed? Number of colonies formed upon what? upon ml plated how much ml is plated and the dilution before plating dilution before plating okay what is the dilution factor how much it was diluted so dilution before plating and it become number of viable cells 
number of how many viable cells are left okay viable cells upon ml of undiluted culture okay ml of undiluted culture right and diluted culture hope you understand it okay what is the influence next you are going to understand what is the influence of environmental factors on growth see halophiles they will require high level of salt concentration so halobacterium is the example acidophile will require optimum range 0.25 sulfobolus alkophile growth optimum will be between 8.0 to 11.5 this is bacillus lk alkalophilus and uh, cyclophile and cyclophile will grow uh, as well in zero uh, like 0.0 uh, degree celsius and optimum temperature is 15 degree celsius as well or even lower so it means in uh, they like cold reasons fine clemidomonas nivalis cyclotrop they can grow uh, in between the range of temperature 0 to 0 uh, 7 degree celsius and uh, has an optimum between 20 to 30 degrees Celsius. They can grow at 0 to 7 degrees Celsius, but optimum range is between 20 to 30 degrees Celsius. Churumanas fluorescens, mesophiles, uh, okay, they are growing on optimum temperature of 24, 20 to 45 degrees Celsius. Nisiria gunari, thermophile, they can grow at 55 degrees Celsius or higher and optimum often between 55 to 65 degrees Celsius. Thermos aquaticus, Hyperthermophile, they have uh, uh, an optimum between 80 and about 110 degree. Pyrococcus uh, pyrodictium, obligate aerobe, completely dependent on oxygen for growth. And uh, example is pseudomonas. Faculty aerobe, definitely they does not require oxygen for growth. But whenever they are having growth, they grow better. They have having oxygen, they grow better in its presence. So, Escherichia and Enterococcus. Aero tolerant and aerobe, they grow well in the presence or absence of O2, so that's why they are aero tolerant and aerobe. And streptococcus pyrogene is an example, remember this thing. Obligate and aerobe, they does not tolerate oxygen and dies in its presence. So, Clostridium is the answer. Micro aerophile, they require oxygen levels below 10% for optimum growth, and Traponema pallidum is the example, right? Okay. Now, how to control? How can you control the bacterial growth? Do you know about how to control first thing? Either you can kill bacteria, okay? Either you can inhibit their growth, inhibit or prevent their growth. Either you can kill bacteria or you can inhibit or prevent their growth. Okay, prevent their growth. Fine. And now, if you are killing bacteria by any agent, that is cidal, okay? If you are inhibiting growth, then you are using some static agent. Okay. Cidal agent is called as bactericidal. And uh, it is known as bacteriostatic. Okay. If an agent is uh, inhibiting the growth of bacteria, it is known as bacteriostatic. You understand it now? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, there are like disinfectants. Very first thing I'm telling you about disinfectant. What is disinfectant? Right? Okay. So what are disinfectants? I'll tell you directly. These they kill organism and mostly they kill microbes present on inanimate matter. You cannot use them directly on the living uh, things. Okay. If uh, I have to give the example, you will know. They are chlorine compounds, copper sulfate, formaldehyde, okay, phenolic compounds or mercury uh, compounds, okay. So, uh, if I'm talking, okay, I'll give you the example. Uh, the I told you phenolic compounds. What they will do? Phenolic compounds, what are they going to do? Phenolic compounds and mercuric chlorides, mercuric, mer this is not, okay, this is mercuric chloride, right? And others are like formaldehyde, formaldehyde. And others are like your copper sulfate, right? Right. So this phenolic compound, they, these phenolic compound, they denature protein and they will disrupt the membrane. Mercury chloride, they will inactivate the protein by sulfide, uh, by binding to their sulfide group, okay? Next come your anti, antiseptics. And now what are antiseptics? Antiseptics, what are they going to do? Antiseptics, okay. 
so antiseptics they will kill or inhibit growth they can even kill or they can inhibit the growth of bacteria they can kill or inhibit the growth of bacteria they are non toxic okay so we can use them on a living organism so example includes your alcohols okay alcohols like ethanol they will denature the protein and they will uh, solubilize the lipids then there are detergents detergents what detergents will do detergents will disrupt the cell membrane then there are iodine solution iodine solution will do what it will inactivate the protein and there is silver nitrate and what is the function of silver nitrate what it will do now it will precipitate the protein yeah, and next is your sterilization sterilization what is sterilization now you know about sterilization so they are going to cause the complete destruction of complete okay complete destruction of microbes okay there will be complete destruction of microbes including their endospores including endospores they will kill even endospores okay okay ji right ji right okay fine so mostly sterilization uh, procedure will involve the use of heat radiation physical removal of cells and common uh, processes of uh, sterilization are like uh, flaming right and then autoclaving these are the processes of uh, sterilization and uh, other one is your um, tindalization okay and uh, filtration tindalization tindalization and filtration last one is your uh, filtration okay now what do you do in flaming uh, you do nothing in flaming Okay, tindalization. I want uh, in uh, see in autoclaving, uh, you heat under pressure. In tindalization, you do not heat under pressure. See during tindalization, sterilized culture media are uh, like they are uh, they are st sterilized actually. Culture media are sterilized because uh, they they may get spoiled by the exposure at higher temperature. These heat sensitive media they will steam at thirty to forty five minutes for three successive generation. In first uh, generation, like bacteria will be killed and if spores are there they, they will germinate and in next successive generation those spores will be killed okay then comes your pasteurization then what is pasteurization okay pasteurization is a we can say it is a brief heat treatment a uh, brief heat treatment brief heat treatment will short period treatment for short period brief heat treatment to reduce the number of bacteria or bacterial co colony they usually kill the disease causing microbes and uh, precisely control heat to reduce the micro microbial population in milk and other heat sensitive liquids and it was named uh, on the name after it was named after uh, louis pasha who first used heat for controlling the spoilage of the wine pasteurization does not kill all organism and therefore uh, uh, not synonymous with sterilization okay so milk is uh, usually like uh, there will be batch method for uh, pasteurization batch method or there could be a flash method okay so what is a batch method and what is a flash method in batch method there is a single exposure for at 63 degrees celsius for uh, like uh, 30 minutes okay and uh, in flash method there is a exposure is 70 to 75 degrees celsius for only uh, 15 seconds okay so that's why it is flash method okay then microbial control uh, like microbial control method there are the there are also some physical agents that can kill so what are the physical agents that can kill the microbes physical agents so physical agents there are many physical agents which are normally used to control microbial growth it is the most rapid and efficient okay so they are heat okay they are x-rays they are uv rays they are gamma rays isn't it okay there are gamma rays there are some chemicals or uh, we want to see chemicals filtration if you can include filtration okay filtration is a physical process okay the most efficient one is heat now even dry heat or moist heat both can kill the bacteria so moist heat it will coagulate it will coagulate and uh, coagulate it will cause coagulation 
and then denaturation okay moist heat cause coagulation and denaturation and dry heat uh, its primary effect on microbe is due to oxidation of large molecules so it will oxidize the large molecule oxidation of large molecules will be there so it will uh, oxidize the large molecules okay so uh, like radiation x-ray gamma rays free radicals in the cytoplasm free radicals will damage the microbial proteins and dna ultraviolet radiation will be there that will damage the dna and infiltration filtration this filtration it will remove the physical removal of uh, cells in liquid or gas and uh, it is important for sterilization of solution which would be denatured by heat uh, like antibiotics minus and vitamins in this process uh, solution or gases are passed through a filter of sufficient uh, pore diameter to remove the smallest known bacteria and filtration is carried out normally by using membrane filters which are cellulose acetate cellulose nitrate or colloidal aid uh, colloidal 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 dion okay so chemical agents now chemical agents you also know about chemical agents what are the different chemical agents that are used chemical agents are there and these chemical agents are like your alcohols okay alcohols alcohols like uh, isopropyl uh, isopropyl alcohol can cause denaturation of protein okay they can cause denaturation of proteins how uh, and uh, these are used as they can be used as antiseptics okay and uh, then come your two heavy metals okay your heavy metals will include which one tell me heavy metals will be your uh, mercury and uh, other one is your uh, silver is it ag yes it is ag okay ag and ag it is used as mercury chloride uh, uh, as a component of mercurochrome okay i'm sorry okay it is uh, used it is used as a mercury mercuric chloride okay as a uh, component of mercurochrome okay component of mercurochrome right mercurochrome okay and ag what ag is doing ag is uh, used as silver nitrate is is used as silver nitrate okay and uh, there are also chemical agents like halogens and uh, halogens are like chlorine and your iodine fine chlorine and iodine right they act as oxidizing agents both of them act as oxidizing agents and react with amino acids proteins and in their nature there is ethylene oxide formaldehyde and beta propioelectron that are used to achieve sterilization then comes your antibiotics okay let me okay i won't remove it let me remove it first okay okay fine wait okay antibiotics what are antibiotics antibiotics against life okay antibiotics means against life but they are against the life of microbes and they are pro life for humans they are pro life for humans right right the term was coined by waxman the waxman coined the term antibiotics so antibiotics there are like broad spectrum antibiotics there are narrow spectrum antibiotics and there are limited spectrum antibiotics so broad spectrum narrow spectrum limited spectrum so name is telling broad spectrum so they can inhibit the growth of gram positive as well as gram negative so they can inhibit growth of gram positive as well as gram negative okay and narrow spectrum either okay either gram positive right or gram negative right and limited they are used on limited number of spaces limited number of spaces right so they can have sidal effect or even static effect okay and here are some bacteria like uh, streptomyces read out you can pause even pause the video and read out each and every 
एंटीबायोटिकोड्यूसिसम Cephalosporium species produces cephalosporins, and uh, these are the example of some commonly used antibiotics, right? And then come uh, the effect of a uh, mechanism of action of antibiotics like penicillin. Penicillin it will inhibit the transpeptidation enzyme which are involved in the cross-linking. Vancomycin uh, it binds directly to D allergenic terminus and inhibit transpeptidation. Bacitracin inhibits cell wall synthesis. Protein synthesis inhibition. Antibiotics: puromycin, kenamycin, neomycin. Puromycin a site target is a site a site of ribosome. Kenamycin attacks on 16 srna. Neomycin also attacks on 60 srna. Streptomycin acts on 30 s ribosome. Remember, streptomycin acts on. This is important for you to re, uh, remember because uh, these are the uh, these are the these are what antibiotics. Uh, on which question are asked for translation? Okay, thiostrapt uh, thiostraptor work on twenty three s RNA. Gentamicin work on sixteen uh, sixty s RNA. Tetracycline affect a site of ribosome. Chlorpenicol act as peptidyl transferase. Erythromycin uh, oh, they act on peptidyl transferase enzymes. Remember this thing. Chlorpenicol act on peptidyl transferase enzyme. Erythromycin act on a thirty s RNA. Okay, fusulic acid uh, inhibit the translation elongation factor G and chylomycin act on translation elongation factor T U. Okay, then anti uh, nucleic acid synthesis inhibition. Here is antibiotics that will block replication. Uh, I think I have covered some of these antibiotics uh, in uh, during uh, my replication lecture as well. Cyprofloxacin inhibit bacterial DNA gyrase, hydroxyurea, ribonucleotide reductase, analgesic acid, gyrase B subunit of gyrase, novobiosin, gyrase B subunit of gyrase, mitomycin C crosslink uh, DNA. Okay, oh, its target are crosslinks of DNA, mitomycin C, and antibiotic that will block now RNA synthesis. It means they will block your transcription. Okay. Earlier were the antibiotics which were inhibiting the translation. It's replication now transcription. Streptolidin, beta subunit of RNA proteins. Actinomycin D binds DNA. Right, uh, rifampin, uh, beta subunit of RNA polymerase. Okay, and bleomycin cuts DNA. These are some of the antibiotics which are used to inhibit the like your uh, different uh, processes. And uh, they are still sulfo sulfanamides. They will inhibit folic acid synthesis by competition with p amino benzoic acid. Folic acid synthesis is important for the synthesis of purines and pyrimidines. Okay, so remember this thing. Okay, then comes your tri uh, tri methoprim. Tri methoprim. They block the tetra hydrofolate synthesis. Uh, Dapsone interferes with folic acid synthesis. Isonazide they may intra they may disrupt pyridoxal or NAD metabolism and functioning. Okay, so you have to remember the function of all these. You should also know about how penicillin function. You should know about cephalosporin, tetracyclines, amino glycoside and antibiotics, uh, and uh, erythromycin. Erythromycin is uh, synthesized from streptomyces erythreus. Okay. And it is useful against gram-negative bacteria and acts as inhibitor of protein synthesis. Chlorpenicol is uh, synthesized from Streptomyces benzoylei, and uh, 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 it is a broad spectrum. Uh, it has a broad spectrum activity. So now you have to do one thing: you have to like the video, okay, share it, and you also have to press the bell icon, right? Just press the bell icon to get the notifications. Press the bell icon as well, right? 
keep sharing the videos i'll keep bringing new and new videos for you like on or i'll be covering your microbiology and then we'll be providing you with previous year question paper okay that's all for today if you want to take the subscription of an academy here is a detail of paid classes on your screen and uh, you can still get a 10 percent off from this fee by using the referral code neha which is the referral code of neha the ma'am just go there and follow her do not forget to subscribe to our channel links are in the description box